Hi everyone, uh, today I want to talk about subsumption. So, so if you've been reading the Haskell news lately, you've, you've probably seen that there's a bit of a to-do about um, uh, this thing called deep subsumption. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about what that is and why it was removed and why it's coming back. Um, so, so here's a, a fairly simple little Haskell program here. So, so first I have everyone's favorite very poorly performing function. Obviously, there's a better way of writing Fibonacci numbers uh, uh, than this, but this is what we have because we want it to be poorly. Uh, we want it to, perf to, to for it to perform poorly. Um, and then I have quite a simple function here. I could have just used plus, but I'm re renamed it f to get sort of better notation. And then I have do that just maps uh, a partially applied f on this little list. So we can compile this. Oh, and by the way, I'm right now, because it's going to turn out to be important, I'm, I'm in verge, uh, GHC version 8.10. Um, so if I compile my subsumption file here, it will build. And then I can call subsumption. If I pass plus RTS dash T, um, then I get my result. But then I also get told the number of bytes allocated in this run of the program. Um, and this is going to be sort of the key thing that we look at. So, so we're going to, uh, as I like to do, whenever doing any kind of performance setting, I like to take detailed notes. So simple ffib25 leads to 17565920 bytes. So now if I change this, and instead of writing f, instead of using a partially applied f, I use what's called eta expansion. Um, and so eta expansion means taking uh, uh, essentially a, a partially applied function and just expanding it out to take all of its arguments by writing explicit lambdas. Um, eta expansion actually means a little bit more than that, but we're not going to get into that today. So I've just changed my program um, to uh, what looks like it should be an equivalent program, but maybe a little bit more explicit. So, so hlint is complaining here because saying, oh, why are you doing that? But that's exactly the thing that we want to look at right now. So I've, I've changed my program. Now I'm going to recompile and run it again, and wow, that's a big change. So here, um, ADA expanded, I get that many bytes. And so if we line this up, uh, we see that this is about three times that. It's going to be a little bit less um, uh, than, than three times the original value. And that's because there's other things that are, being, that are allocating other than this call to FIB25. But this FIB25 is the big one. Um, and, and so what's really happening here is now for each element of my list, I'm reevaluating fib25 from scratch. Now previous, let's, let's look at the two together. So if I have, whoops, uh, doop, 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 doop. Uh, I still need the parenthesis though. Um, Okay, so now I have this version and this version. They, they look like they do the same thing, but we see that performance is really, really different. And that's because when GHC sees this, it'll say, well, f of fib25, before mapping over that, um, as long as we're mapping at least once, the, 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 uh, the code generator realizes, oh, let's just evaluate fib25 once, and then now I can build a partially applied f and then map that over uh, the, the elements of my list. Whereas down here, I don't have anything that's partially applied, and so it means that each element of the list, we're going to reevaluate this entire function, including the call to fib25. So what we see here is that this eta expansion, by, by making this extra variable explicit and adding an extra lambda, it means that we lose sharing. Um, we can't share the result of fib25 over these three numbers. Um, instead, we recompute it, and that's really bad for performance. So we want to prefer this top program in this case here. There might be other cases where eight expansion is helpful, um, uh, but in this case, it's really quite disastrous. So what does this have to do with subsumption? Um, so I'm going to change my f ever so slightly and add a quite, of a, quite a silly little extra for all here. So this is going to complain because I haven't enabled enough extension. So let's turn on rank and types, which will allow that to work. And now my program compiles. So let's go down to this version. So we observed this version to be the more efficient one. And now I compile and run. But now we observe that it's less efficient. So um, this is, we'll say, eta contracted, but with extra for all. And it's that many bytes. And let's see, because we always need to line up numbers to be able to compare them. It's actually, wow, look at that, the exact same as the Ada expanded version. 
Now, the reason for that is, is that the type checker does the eta expansion for us here. Well, why is that? Why does type checker eta, eta expand? So, well, let's look. So f of fib 25, so hold on, let's start with this. f has type int to int to for all a int. f of fib 25 is going to, that already takes one int. This has type int to for all a int. And map, well, map, we're going to specialize map here because everything is just int. So we'll say that map has type int, arrow int, to list of int, to list of int. And when we see map of this thing here, we normally expect the, the, the argument passed to map to have the same type as the argument expected by map. And so here map is expecting int arrow int, but f of fib 25 does not have that type. It has the type int for all a dot int. And so GHC eight and seven, and I think most of six, maybe all of six, I haven't gone back to the history to figure out when this feature started. Um, what it does is it does this, what's called a deep subsumption check. And so the type checker checks um, is, um, I guess, int for all a int more polymorphic than int arrow int. Um, and if it is, then we can specialize this top thing to map to match to match this, right? So we want to say, well, this is actually more polymorphic than this. And so let's, um, let's, let's allow this function call. We're going to say, this is good. We can just sort of use some instantiation to reduce this. But what it really means is, is that in order to get this to work, type checker says yes, but we must eta expand. Um, and, and the reason for that is that we need to somehow massage ffib25 to instead of having this type with a for all in it, to have this type without the for all. Um, and see, how can we do that? Well, if we do this, that is going to have type int arrow int because here ffib25x, well, let's see, ffib25x has type for all a dot int. Um, well, let's actually really say if x has type int, then f of fib25x has type for all a dot int. And it, what, once we have a for all here, we can instantiate that for all. Um, and so if we instantiate that for all, and I can say if x has type int, f of fib25x also has type int. And then this fact is true. Okay, so that eta expansion allowed us to get rid of the for all, but as we've observed, it's eta expansion. And so because it's eta expansion, then we get this extra allocation. What's, what's really troublesome here is that all I've done is change the type of f, and that's changed the runtime performance of this partial application of f. And this can be very confusing and very unexpected. And, and so, um, because of this, as well as other, as, as other things, there's, yes, there, it's true that this deep subsumption check, oh, by the way, what do I mean by deep? What I mean by deep is that we look past this int arrow to find this for all a over here. Shallow subsumption would just look at the top. And if we just look at the top, then we never need to a to expand. Um, so, but, but because we do this deep subsumption check, it means that GHC is going to insert a to expansions for us. And, and that, and that, as I said, causes trouble. So because we want to avoid this, as well as some other reasons, including around in predicative types, um, we decided that for GHC9, we should remove this, this automatic eta expansion um, because it's, it's kind of wrong. Um, and so with that, it means that if I change to GHC9, this program as written no longer type checks. Um, so let's observe this. So if I say GHC up uh, set GHC, um, uh, I think 9.0.2 will work. Oh yes, aha, excellent. So and then now, if I, co if, whoops, I didn't need to do that again. If I try to compile, I'm going to um, get could not match B0 with for all A int. Um, so the reason it's B0 is because we're still trying to infer what the types are that map is working with, but this B0 really should just be int. Um, and and that means the reason that the GHC9 can't accept this is that it just refuses to do this automatic eta expansion. If I do the manual eta expansion, 
like this, then GHC9 is very happy. There's no problem. Um, but now it means that I, the programmer, have decided to do this, and so I can also understand the consequences and sort of wonder about the performance consequences of making this decision. It's not automatic. So, so that's what happens in GHC 9.0 and 9.2. Um, but it turns out that people didn't like this very much. Um, let me sort of sort of summarize um, the, the state of play here. So GHC 8 and below, automatic ADA expansion via deep subsumption. Um, oh, uh, I should have said at some point that subsumption is this check, is this more polymorphic than check. That's checking to see whether, um, I guess, this type subsume, oh no, no, be the other way around, whether this type subsumes that type. Um, okay, so GHC 8 and below did this. GHC 9.0 and 9.2, no automatic ADA, ex ADA expansion, no deep subsumption. But what this means is that programs that previously compiled no longer do. So it, as part of the impredicative types extension and, and the work there, which also uh, uh, it turns out meant that, or, or, or suggested that deep subsumption could make type inference unstable in the presence of impredicative types. Um, although really, if it didn't do this ADA expansion, I don't think we could have removed it. Um, so the paper, the academic paper that uh, that determined that uh, was about impredicative types recently, um, uh, said that did, did a little study and found, oh, you know, 200 or so packages, um, we can double check that paper for the exact number, that uses the, that uses ADA expansion. But all those authors have to do is just add a little ADA expansion and then everything is okay, right? Every time something breaks because we lost this deep subsumption, you can always fix by, by doing just a little ADA expansion. Um, um, I said always, it's not quite always, it's just 99% of the time. Um, and, and so that was, we said, oh, well, that's probably reasonable. Turns out that it's not. Um, now, re recently, as people have been trying to upgrade to 9.0, this has been a huge stumbling block, much bigger than we anticipated. Um, and so, to be responsive to this, this outcry um, from users, we've actually reintroduced uh, deep subsumption. So GHC 9.4 um, and 9.2.4, which will come out soon, will have, yes, deep subsumption, but only if you turn on the extension. Only if you say deep subsumption, you have to ask for it. Um, but actually, that's still not quite good enough because we want a smooth migration path for people still on 8.10 to use one of these newer uh, version uh, GHC 9s. Um, so also, deep subsumption is on with Haskell 2010 or Haskell 98. Um, but because any sort of package that's being uh, distributed, that's going to have a cabal file. In a cabal file, you're, you're required to specify what language that you're operating against. So is it Haskell 98 or Haskell 2010 or a new one, GHC 2021? By, but this GHC 2021, this newest version, only came out in the GHC 9 series. And so everything that worked before GHC 9 has to have to Haskell 2010 or Haskell 98. Because deep subsumption is going to be part of Haskell 2010 and Haskell 98, then it means that every uh, package being compiled using a cabal file is going to get the benefit of deep subsumption and have a smooth migration path. The end story here is a little dissatisfying because actually we GHC developers, we think deep subsumption is a bad idea. It, it causes this ADA expansion, which can cause strange performance in your programs. And we don't really think that this is the way that Haskell should be. Um, so the, the long term, you know, keeping this this um, this extension run for for a long time isn't great. But we're hoping that as people migrate to GHC 2021, they'll do their, the ADA expansion that they need to, um, and and turn off this this flag. Um, you know, we also should just take a, a small step back and think about what are the lessons that we've learned here. Well. Um, We've learned that we need to take breakage a lot more seriously, right? Even if something is simple to do, the fact that it has to be done at all is really quite annoying to many of our contributors. And so we need to be quite careful about this. Um, another important lesson is when we do pull out a, uh, um, roll out a breaking change, we have to do much better with the error messages. So the error message that we get here does not say, this is the error message that you might see, does not say do ADA expansion or even better, 
make an explicit lambda, right? Because not everyone knows what the what the phrase eta expansion uh, means. And so this, the, I think that this is a big problem. It's not something that's actually been talked about all that much in, in terms of this issue, but I think that the lack of a good error message is a real problem. Case in point, I was writing some code in GHC 9.2 and it wasn't compiling. I must have spent a half hour, 45 minutes. I started writing a GHC bug report and then I just realized it was the lack of deep subsumption. So even though I was very much in the know about all of this, uh, it, it still caught me by surprise in practice. And so that says that we really have a, a little bit of improvement that we could do with the error messages around here. Um, so anyway, so that's the story. The, the fix is, is coming in. Um, uh, you know, I hope that, that users can, can see, oh, you know, there's, there's some responsiveness here. I think we've learned some lessons. I hope we do better in the future. Um, and in any case, I hope this explanation was interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.